One of the things that I absolutely love about Moonlit Fantasy is how it does overpower characters so well. And this is kind of like fun mix of a protagonist that isn't good or evil. He simply has his own objectives in life, but he, I just, ah, oh, I love the cold reaction that he gives to his opponents. Like, I, I just can't gush over. I'm like trying to sound all analytical and professional here, going into the deep analysis of his dark and mysterious... Dude, I just, I just love it. I really love the way he can be so cold and calculated towards his opponents. That's what I want to see in a protagonist. I'm so goddamn tired of seeing so many protagonists that try to be so virtuous in to their enemies like the way they try and soften their enemies up and go oh you know i understand how you feel and blah 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 yap 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 let's hold hands and get some tea and have some biscuits mm. no the dude's just like get out or i'm kicking your ass out you got two options missy walk out or i throw you out that's what I, and the cold reaction that he gives is just mm, ah Bon appétit. Beautiful. I absolutely love it. Because it shows that he's not willing to just, you know, polish them up, make them feel good, like a lot of other animes do when they're in this kind of setting. And I could name some, but I'm not going to. But when it comes to his opponents, yeah. And the way it kind of makes it sound like to the demons, they're like, oh, so you're taking the side of the human. He's like, no, I've just made a deal with the goddess. He gets something, she gets something, He's just saying, go away, go go somewhere else and fight. I'm doing my end of the bargain. And that's it. And I love the way he just torments his opponents. Like, he's not showing all his strength. Because, yeah, he wants to keep it, you know, not show every single card that he's got. Which is understandable because he's not sure how strong other people can be. And that's one thing where he kind of notes. He's like, is everyone really this weak? Because to him, he thinks that maybe there are people that are, like, could be stronger than him. That's how he's acting. That's how he's going into this. It kind of feels like Irons from Overlord, where Irons was very paranoid and worried that, oh, what if there's someone else out there really strong that could rival me? So he's very cautious on the steps that he makes, when in reality, he's the big dog out there. He can take anyone on. No one can rival him. So it's very similar in that sense. Like It's like, okay, sure, when you're in that ivory tower watching down on an anime, you can say, oh, it doesn't matter. No one can beat you. Whoa, just blow them all up. But from a realistic standpoint, if I was in that position, yeah, I'd be cautious as well. I would not want to show all my cards. I wouldn't want to use my trump card abilities. And yeah, that armor one is pretty powerful. And the funny thing is, is they all think he's a sorcerer. <laughs> He's an archer, and they're all like, oh yes, he's the great sorcerer. He's not a sorcerer, he's a goddamn archer, and you're still getting ruffle stomped. It's like when Irons rolled around in his armor suit. Kind of makes it feel like there's some in interesting parallels between the two, actually, when you think about it. That kind of like, oh, he looks like a sorcerer with a body armor, so it's kind of like a hybrid between melee and sorcerer, but he's just an archer. Irons rolling around in his Momon outfit as a warrior, but he's really a sorcerer. I love it. I really love that parallel. Maybe it might give me some inspirations for a title to kind of trigger some kids. But seeing that, I think that's a very good way of doing an OP protagonist. Being cautious, being prepared, but also trying to test how strong other people are. But I also love the way he mocked that girl. He's like, oh, you got charmed. I'll remove it for you for free. I won't do anything nefarious. And th just the way, you can sell straight away the way she started talking about, oh yeah, I just let him go because he entertained me. And it's like, um, he's stronger than you and he's showing you an even better time. But then the way she's kind of like really like, oh, he's so amazing the way he cares about his friends and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, you're really into him. He charmed you hard and fast. Which just shows that even her, being as strong as she is, still was able to be charmed, which is kind of clever on his part because it actually saved his life because if he didn't charm, he'd be dead. But I do wonder if a little MC here will actually remove that charm. It's also very clever because it actually is a way in the story to keep him alive because to be honest, he should have been dead at that point. But because of his charm ability, he's still alive. 
it's very, very well done. It's also funny because I've seen some people complain. They're like, oh, where's the other two girls? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, I want to see more of his power. Like, we kind of know a lot about those girls. and they, they, they get heaps of time to shine. But I want to see him do more of his fun stuff. I just love the cold, calculated response. It's just so refreshing to see that in an anime rather than seeing those over-the-top bubbly personalities because sometimes I do feel like those bubbly personalities are overdone and they'll feel a little bit cliche. I mean, I get it. Not everyone's dark and gloomy and emo like me. I'm just kidding. But you get it. You get the joke. Not everyone's like that. But at the same time, you get so many bubbly personalities. And the example that I was going to get was Slime. Like, Rimuru in Slime can be a little bit too naive to the point where he's too bubbly even to his worst enemies he, who he should know have every intent to destroy him but then he's all bubbly and nice to them I just kind of get annoyed at protagonists that do that at times because I'm like okay stop being so ignorant and just decimate them please <laughs> I'm gonna get hate for that but what I mean by that is that sometimes protagonists in an isekai environment can be a little bit too too nice for their own good and I do feel like sometimes that can feel a little bit unrealistic. Some animes it pulls it off well, like Slime, it does pull it off well. But I'm just using that as an example of some other animes that kind of do that. There's some real cliche animes out there that have a protagonist that's just like, they're trying to be a, like a Mary Sue, like too good for their own good, even to their own worst enemies and it's like, okay, there's a point where you're just like, hey, enough's enough, my patience is weird thin. And that's what I like about him. Like he's willing to like come to the table and be nice at the start and say, hey, I'm here to do this, the goddess has contracted me to do this, we've made a deal, you can leave, and I won't follow you. And then they go, oh no, we're going to fight you because we think you have a chance. And then it just completely decimates, and he's like, don't even think about it. Because while he's fighting the, the dragon chick, the other one's about to try something, and he just looks with the cold eyes from the side, he's just like, don't even try. It's just like, don't, don't even, don't even think about it. Don't even humor yourself. It's just like, I will completely decimate you. I love the way he just threw the other guys, like Team Rocket, just blasts him off out of the sky. It's just like, kind of just shows. He's just treating them like children, just slapping them around. It's like, yeah, whatever. You want to keep going at this? Sure. I'll, I'll entertain myself. I kind of want to see what with this other dragon dude, because he thinks he's some top dog. I want to see him get himself slapped around a couple of times. That would be hilarious. Even though they've gotten stronger, there's still nothing compared to him. So... This is the thing, this is what I love about Moonlit Fantasy, is the change in tone, and I like seeing protagonists that aren't the normal copy-paste style. Which is why I feel like it would be nice to see more isekais like this get a little bit more attention, but because it's not... Isekais get a lot of hate just because it's cool to hate isekais, and that's the problem. Over the years, we've had a lot of content creators making the same meme videos every three months going, Oh my god, ten more isekais, let's bash on them all because they're all the same, even though they're actually not. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it gets annoying when you make the same video, and I know some people are going to know who I'm referring to. I have no hatred towards them. I just find it annoying every anime season you get those same jokes of like, oh, look at all these isekais, but I'm like, there are actually good ones out there. Just because there are a couple of ones that may feel a little bit, you know, mass manufactured carbon copy, there are still good ones out there. And those are the ones we should be praising as trying to be unique. And being an isekai is very easy when it's just reincarnated, transported, whether it's a soul, a body, or whatnot. It's very easy, and it's a nice trope to have because it allows to create a fresh new world with a personality from a past life. It's a good self-insert, which is understandable why so many people like those isekais. So, I'm re I really love the episode. And it's kind of built, built off the last episode where we've got some of these cool action scenes, scene abilities and stuff. Like, we got a bunch of episodes of, like, world-building, politic kind of stuff. Now we're getting some combat stuff with some talking as well. But I think it still follows that issue that some people just complain because they're like, they want, like, some weird mixture thing. And I'm like, this is good. It's got some good talking. It's got some back and forth. I love the taunting. Like, the taunting's really good. So... I'm enjoying it. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'll harp on again. I'm really looking forward to more of the light novel volumes coming out because seeing the anime, seeing the light novel, I love seeing the differences. But we do have release dates for volume two and three of this. So again, stick around. I will be doing the light novel reviews. Check out my volume one review if you want to. And again, I will be doing light novel reviews on this series. And when there is a season three, 
course, I'll be covering it. So again, if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.